Hello everybody and welcome to Evolutionary Milestones. Over the course of this series of videos, as I said in my introduction, just above, we're going to be looking at the origins of life and a series of major steps in the evolution of life, documenting roughly its first 3000 million years of evolution or so. The first few videos are going to be focusing on an event called abiogenesis. Abiogenesis is another word for the study of the origin of life. And these first few videos are going to cover how, when, um, and possible processes by which abiogenesis may have occurred. So let's jump right in. In order to understand the appearance of life, first we have to define what life is. One definition which I've taken from the reference shown at the bottom here is that a living thing should have a metabolism. That is a coordinated system of chemical reactions contributing to its maintenance, a system that imports energy to maintain order. And it should also have hereditary replication. That is a system of copying in which the new structure resembles the old. I quite like that definition. I think it covers most of the major bases, but there are actually, if you look around and do some reading, you'll find out there are a number of different definitions. And this um, kind of idea of what life is, is actually something that can be quite tricky to pin down. And I would say for our purposes, all of the de definitions of life that are useful for us to understand abiogenesis for, for the next few videos are that living things have three things in common. They are things that are able to maintain themselves. Um, they can replicate, so they are able to copy themselves, and they do so imperfectly, imperfect replication, or um, in the case of life on Earth, mutations are kind of the, the, the raw variation upon which evolution acts. I've put some things in a quiz below this video and when you're done watching this video do you have a go at figuring out whether those are dead or alive by taking that quiz and see how you get on and as I suppose a slight aside when we're thinking about what life is one thing I would really like you to take away from this series of videos is that even what we may call the simplest life forms on earth today are really very very complex no matter what organism it is that you're looking at today, if it's still alive, we are seeing the result of 3,800 million years or so of evolution. I think a really good example of this is how DNA is converted to proteins across the tree of life in a process that's called protein synthesis. This process is shown for a uh, an organism that has a, uh, a nucleus here, on this slide and you can see that we start off with DNA but in order to make um, go from DNA to proteins which will actually act within cells there are many different steps we have to transcribe the DNA to RNA um, that has to go through the nuclear membrane in this case because this organism has a nucleus that then um, is acted upon by ribosomes which eventually make a protein so this is a mind-bendingly complex theory process that's made up of a series of individual and it's themselves complex steps. And we think that generally this must have evolved in a piecemeal fashion to think anything else really doesn't make sense. And at life's origins, we may expect that everything, living organisms were much simpler. So I would identify that that fact that things were simpler and we're now looking when we study living organisms at the results of such a long period of evolution is coupled with the fact that actually we lack chemical and fossil evidence of when early life was around. That is because we don't actually have ro sedimentary rocks in which we'll find fossils that record the very early earth. Maybe have a think about why that may be the case. But both of those facts mean that we have to deal with a lot of uncertainty when we're studying life's origins. And I think I will have succeeded spectacularly if I am able to finish this series of videos and you're able to kind of get a feel 
people where the uncertainty lies within this particular area. So when we're talking about the origin of life, we have to place this within the framework of the history of Earth. Um, if you read old textbooks, there have there was a, a, an idea um, back many back in the 70s and 80s that was quite popular called panspermia, which suggests that maybe life had originated elsewhere. Um, that's no longer held or no longer holds, I should say, a broad consensus, and we think that probably a biogenesis occurred on Earth, but actually that's very hard to prove either way. But if we assume that life started on Earth, um, then we have to consider Earth's history from its very origins. So this timeline is there to allow us to do just that. So on this timeline of your kind of orientation, I've put um, Homo sapiens here on the far right. In fact, every emperor and king every uh, pauper, everyone that's ever lived that was a human fits basically into one one hundred thousandth of the right hand pixel of this um, bar here. So Homo sapiens history is quite short on this time scale. Dinosaurs, which are shown by this black bar here, were around for quite a long, quite a bit longer. But even so, they and indeed the trilobites, which are represented by this um, black bar here, which lived for really quite a long time, somewhere in the region of 180 to 200 million years. They kind of, they pale into the, the bookend of this long time scale. This time scale starts at 4,560 million years ago. And we think that around this time, a accretionary phase of Earth history built up. There, there were, during this accretionary phase, high temperatures that precluded um, liquid water being present on Earth. Um, water would have been there in the form of steam, and that would that temperature would have incinerated organic compounds. It was probably followed by cooling in a period where water and simple organic compounds could accumulate. Oxygen, oxygen isotopes, which are taken um, from 4.4 billion year old detrital zircons. A zircon is a very tough mineral that lasts for a very long time. Um, and we can study the isotopes of oxygen in that mineral. And that suggests that there was um, liquid water present from about 100 to 200 million years after the beginning of that accretionary phase. So that's actually very, very early in Earth history. In fact, this paper here, which um, reported these oxygen isotope results, suggested that from about 4.4 to 4 billion years ago, extensive liquid water oceans existed for long periods on the surface of the Earth. Those would have been cool enough to allow the survival of organic compounds, although there is significant debate about exactly what temperature those oceans may have been. The Earth was cooling very rapidly, so oceans may have been a lot hotter back then. Moon cratering, so if we look at the craters in the moon, suggests that possibly this period from 4.4 to 4 billion years ago was relatively impact-free. There weren't lots and lots of um, asteroids and comets and meteorites hitting the Earth during this time. And it's in that quiescent, so this kind of quite um, cold and uh, quiet period, I say cold, it may have been a lot warmer, but at least we had liquid oceans. It was in probably this interval that the key steps in the origin of life might have occurred. That is a statement of my opinion, rather than a broad consensus. However, the other thing that we need to consider in this timeline when we're looking at the origin of life is that at 3.9 billion years ago, there was an event called the late heavy bombardment. That we um, have lots of evidence from, from moon cratering shown here in the middle, and here's a um, a computer generated reconstruction of what the moon may have looked like in the Earth at that time. And that is a period which we think represents a spike in impact rates. So you can see that represented um, on this graph here where we have impact rate on the Y axis time on the x-axis, and this LHB is the late heavy bombardment that's labelled here. So around 3.9 billion years ago, there was a spike 
in the number of things that were hitting the Earth. And this is currently thought to have lasted between 20 and 200 million years. Most recent estimates tend to think it's around the lower limit, so around 20 million years. It was previously thought, and older textbooks will tell you, that this uh, um, killed all life and basically sterilized the, uh, the Earth, so abiogenesis must have occurred after the late heavy bombardment. The current thinking, um, often based around uh, kind of computer modeling studies, um, is that life need not necessarily postdate the late heavy bombardment. Computer models, um, such as those in this source here, suggest that there is no plausible situation in which the habitat habitable zone on Earth would have been fully sterilized by this process. So where does that fact leave us? Well, we know we have this late heavy bombardment here, somewhere between 3.9 billion years um, and, and a bit younger than that. But we also know we have this nice quiet period that was conducive to life shortly after the origins of, of Earth in that accretionary phase in which abiogenesis could have occurred. And so uh, the balance of probabilities suggests to me personally that it wouldn't be ridiculous to look for the origin of life and abiogenesis to have occurred on Earth in that quiescent period and then to have su survived through the late heavy bombardment. And then after that point, evolution continued along this timeline here. So that's it for video number one. In the next videos, we're going to look at some uh, possible processes by which abiogenesis may have occurred. So I'll see you in those shortly. Thank you for watching.